So it's been a little while since I've done just a simple book haul thing. And those are always fun and entertaining. So I figured I would pop on and do a book haul for you guys. So yeah, I just have a lot of stuff on the floor right now that I'm going to show you. And because I have so much here to show you, uh, you might want to just get comfy and grab some snacks that'll last you a few years because you're going to be here a while. First up, uh, it was my sister's 16th birthday this past weekend, and I got her a couple of books, but I also wanted to take her out and go book shopping, since I do that with a lot of my siblings at their birthday. So we went to Half Price Books first, and a little bit of a story. I uh, had four huge, humongous, heavy boxes full of books and DVD movies that I just didn't want. Like I said, four big boxes, though I wasn't expecting to get much because I've never had much luck with half price books. I wasn't expecting any more than like maybe $10 a box, so like $40 altogether, maybe 50 at the most. But anyway, they called me up to the counter and they're like, hey, we can offer you $128. And I was just like, okay. I was pretty much in shock, so I did not feel guilty about buying a few books for myself. Now, if you just watched my private library tour that I posted recently, you would see that I have a lot of horror paperbacks. I love good old cheesy horror paperbacks from the 80s and 90s. Um, none of these were really published in hardcover. Um, I tend to prefer hardcover but for these, you can only get them in paperback. And the first one here is called Sins of the Flesh, and this one is, like, really cool. It opens up here, and there's, like, this gnarly-looking monster behind there. It's a really V.C. Andrews gimmicky kind of cover. The next one is called Torments by Lisa W. Cantrell. This is actually the sequel to her book called The Mance. Um, I don't have that one yet. I still need to buy it, but it is very, very, very rare and for some reason extremely expensive to buy online. That one's like a Halloween-themed haunted house book. Um, however, Torments is the sequel and I was really happy to find this there for like $1.99. The next one I have been looking into for a little while and it's called Mr. Hands by Gary A. Bonbeck? Bronbeck. It's Bronbeck. This book just sounds really creepy. It says, uh, it was an odd doll carved out of wood with stubby legs and long arms and huge hands. So little Sarah named it Mr. Hands. She loved that doll until the day she was murdered. Now her mother Lucy has discovered something amazing about her daughter's doll. It allows her to control another Mr. Hands. But this one is no doll. He's a living, terrifying being with horrendous power. The next one I have here is The Devil's Cat by William W. Johnstone. I did have a copy of this book that I ordered online and it came in in very bad condition. Apparently the person who owned it before was a very heavy smoker and uh, there was nicotine stains all over it and the book smelled horrible. Um, but it's a very rare book and I was happy to have a copy. Uh, then I found this at Half Price Books and it's in very nice condition. There's a, a little bit of uh, creasing in the spine but it's not too bad, not as bad as the other one. And yeah, it's just a really nice copy and I love the cover. It has like this holographic thing here where the cat's head kind of turns into a devil's head. It's really cheesy, and I love these kind of books. This is published by Zebra Books. They were a really popular publisher of horror novels and romance paperbacks and stuff in the 80s, but I really loved their horror line until they kind of discontinued that. They just publish really weird, kind of trashy uh, horror novels that aren't really good, but they just have great covers and they're fun to read. Next, I have Dark Visions by L.J. Smith. I'm a big fan of L.J. Smith's Secret Circle uh, series, which is about witches. I really liked it. It's not a good series by any means, but it was a lot of fun. So I've been wanting to get into her other books, and I found this one here. It is a bind-up of all three books in the Dark Visions trilogy. So it is a huge, massive tome of a book. I also picked up a first edition copy of The Last Olympian by Rick Riordan. This is the last book in the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series. Um, I have already read this before and it's one of my favorite books in the series. I just didn't own a hardcover copy of this. So those were all of the books that I bought at Half Price Books. And then I also got a calendar, which they give out every year. And then we went over to Barnes and Noble and I was looking at their leather bound books and had a mini heart attack because there were a ton of brand new ones that I didn't even know were out. I had no clue that this was a thing, and it is Where the Sidewalk Ends and Everything on It by Shel Silverstein. I'm a huge Shel Silverstein fan. I've loved his books ever since I was a kid, but I've never owned his books before. I've always just checked them out from the library. 
So when I saw this, I had to get it. Next up, I have a stack of pre-orders that I have gotten over the past couple months from Amazon because I am obsessed with Amazon Prime and I cannot stop pre-ordering things. The first one I have already started reading. That is A Season with the Witch, The Magic and Mayhem of Halloween in Salem, Massachusetts by J.W. Ocker. I have The Twelve Days of Dash and Lily by Rachel Cohn and David Levithan. This is the sequel to Dash and Lily's Book of Dares, which I read last year, and I absolutely adored it. And then I also got Heartless by Marissa Meyer. I pre-ordered this for pretty cheap off of Amazon. Can we just talk about how beautiful this book is? Seriously, I've never seen something so pretty in my life. I also got the new Doctor Strange Omnibus from Marvel. This is a very big and heavy book. I really love Marvel's Omnibus editions. The colors are just very nice and yeah, it's fun to go back and revisit some of the old comics. I did just see the movie and I really enjoyed it, so I'm looking forward to finding out a little bit more about Doctor Strange. And then I have an even heavier book here. It is Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, the illustrated edition. Uh, with illustrations by Jim Kay. I also recently made an Ollie's trip and I found Skink No Surrender by Carl Heeson. Heeson? I can't remember how to pronounce his last name. I also found The Rosie Project. I've heard a lot about this book. Um, I heard that it was going to be turned into a movie with Jennifer Lawrence. I don't know if that's still going to happen because I haven't really heard anything else about it. Ollie's also had The Rosie Effect, which is the sequel, though I heard that one is not very good and that you can pretty much just skip it altogether. So I think I will. I'll just stick with the first book. This was only $3.99. I also got Stephen King's Bazaar of Bad Dreams. That is just like the coolest cover I have ever seen on a Stephen King book. And then I found this one at Ollie's for $2.99 and I couldn't turn it down. That is Zombies, The Complete Guide to the World of the Living Dead by Zachary Graves. This just looks like a really fun book and it has a lot of cool information and photographs. There's also a lot of like poster art from movies and stuff. I just thought it looked fun. And then lastly, about a week ago, I drove by a random Goodwill and decided to stop in. Uh, and I found a whole bunch more uh, 80s horror paperbacks because i just so obsessed with these. I think Stranger Things really did something to me. Uh, the first one is Project God. This is by V.M. Thompson. This is another uh, zebra horror novel. And then I found this other zebra horror novel. It is called Witch Spell by Guy N. Smith. Uh, here's a random horror paperback. It's called Toyland. I thought that looked really fun. And then here is Primal Scream by Michael Slade. I also found this uh, Universal Monsters children's book. It is about the Wolfman. I love Universal Monsters, so whenever I see anything like this, I always pick it up. This next one I was extremely surprised to find at a Goodwill. It is a sealed edition of Diana, the Unseen Archives from the Easton Press. Easton Press publishes a lot of the leather-bound books that I have. They're genuine leather, uh, 22 karat gold on the spine, and around here. They also have satin in papers. They're very expensive books. This one is out of print, and it usually goes for about $60 to $70 on eBay. So that's what I'm going to do. And this was only $5.99, so I couldn't turn it down. I'll probably post this on eBay for about $50, $60 if you're interested in buying it. Just message me and let me know. So those were all of the books that I've gotten over the past couple of months. Um, but also just something else that's kind of nerdy that I wanted to show you. I got a couple more pop figures. My dad and my stepmom got this one for me. It is Jack Skellington as the Pumpkin King. So it's from the beginning of the movie where he has the pumpkin head. And then also I recently posted on Twitter that I really wanted this new uh, Once Upon a Time Captain Hook pop figure. He has Excalibur, which is from season five. It is so detailed. Even on the sword, it says Killian Jones and Emma Swan. I am a huge fan of Hook. He is my favorite character on the show. I posted about this on Twitter and my friend saw it and randomly sent it to me. So that was really awesome of him. And also because I'm a nerd and I really like Captain Hook, I decided to go as him for Halloween this year. There's a picture right there. It was a very expensive costume, but it was worth it. So that is all for my book haul today. If you've stuck around this long, thank you. And I will see you later in my Blu-ray haul. Bye. I lied. I'm back. Hi. Um, I was editing the video the same day here, and I got a notification on my phone that something had just come in the mail, and I wanted to share it because I'm really excited. And that is... Tales from the Dark Side, the script book by Joe Hill. Um, there's a lot of excitement going on in my brain right now.
So Tales from the Dark Side was a TV show that was on in the 80s. It was a horror anthology show reminiscent to uh, The Twilight Zone and Tales from the Crypt. Uh, I used to watch it on sci-fi all the time when I was a kid. I would get up in the morning and it would be the first show I would turn on. They just played a lot of reruns of it in the morning. But anyway, there was news last year in 2015 that there was going to be a reboot of the show. And I was super, super excited about it. Um, and Joe Hill was called on to write the first few episodes. Um, and then the show was filmed, like two episodes of it were filmed, and then it just didn't happen. And I was really disappointed. CBS and CW, they all turned it down. Um, so hopefully we'll get to see the actual episodes that were filmed. But until then, they just released all of Joe Hill's screenplays within this little book right here. It's a lot smaller than I thought it would be. But anyway, I was really excited. I just popped it open real quick because I wanted to read the introduction. I already knew that there was a new book, a new comic book series coming out that adapts all of these graphic novels um, as a comic book series. Uh, so I already pre-ordered that and I was really excited about it. But the comic book adaption has called back all of the uh, people who worked on the Lock and Key comic that Joe Hill wrote, which is really, really exciting. So the same artist, the same editor, the same team is in charge of that comic book series. And it's going to be like this really big overarching thing. And I'm very, very excited about that. But then I was reading the introduction here and I'll just read you the last paragraph. It says here, Ted Adams, the CEO of IDW, which is the publisher of this book right here, uh, called me up to talk about his company's expansion into television. They had just landed a hit show on sci-fi with Winona Earp, or I don't, I don't know how you pronounce that, and were searching for a follow-up. Ted thought of Lock and Key and was wondering if I had any interest of writing a pilot Oh, so excited. So anyway, um, Lock and Key was written and made into a pilot episode. Um, and you can go and you watch the trailer online. It was really, really bad and nobody picked it up. But it seems like it's finally going to be a sci-fi show. I don't know if this news was released like on the internet. I just missed it. But I just read it for the first time in this. And I'm just so excited. I'm excited to read this. I'm excited for the comic book series based off of this. And I'm also really excited for the TV show of Lock and Key. Yeah, anyway, I hope you guys have a really good night, and I'll see you later. Bye.